You might have a lot of guns in your arsenal, but eventually you'll realize that your collection is too much to handle, and sooner or later you'll have to call the herd. But did you know that there are some guns that you should never sell? If you happen to own a rare piece, I strongly recommend against selling it, because chances are its market value will appreciate exponentially over time. Without further ado, here's our list of guns you should never sell under any circumstances. 2020 Colt Python I've always had a super soft spot for double action revolvers. Few big wheel guns have had more cameos on screen than the Colt Python, and not a one of them has had a better name. The 2020 Colt Python is a semi-automatic revolver that features a six-shot, stainless steel gun that's chambered in 357 Magnum. It comes in two lengths, a 6-inch and a 4-inch. Like the King Cobra Target and King Cobra, the Python features a recessed crown. The most prominent feature of the Python is its ventilated rib. This feature is instantly identifiable due to its appearance. The combination of the barrel and rib's heavy profile and the thick frame of the Python adds up to a good amount of weight forward. It's not clear where the weight savings are coming from. The frame of the gun looks incredibly thick in the forward, top strap, and crane area. Despite being criticized for being delicate, the Colt Python doesn't look like it's made from plastic. Its trigger and guard are made from solid materials and are unmarred by modern offerings. The 2020 Colt Python is a great choice for those who are looking for a classic revolver with a modern twist. Barrett M82A1 The 50 BMG cartridge dates from World War I and was designed as an anti-personnel, anti-material round, which meant it could kill a truck as easily as it could kill a soldier. Its power is simply stupendous, and there is nothing to compare it to in the roster of small arms. After World War II, when surplus ammo for it became available, a few brave souls decided to build guns for the beast that they could shoot for sport. But the rifles were cobbled together in machine shops and garages, and were huge, clunky, immobile, and inaccurate. Enter Ronnie Barrett, who designed the first practical 50 BMG sniper rifle. His semi-auto was mobile manageable, dead reliable, and with good ammunition, dead accurate. You say you want to hit at long range? Here is long range in spades. A skilled 50 BMG shooter can hit at 2,000 yards and more. It is so good a rifle that our armed forces took only eight years to adopt it. Higher praise than that you do not get. Walther PPK Carl Walther developed the PPK or Police Pistol Detective model for release in 1930, and that gun has paved the way for a number of other pistol designs that followed. The PPK was small and trim, light enough to be carried concealed by detectives working undercover. It became a standard bearer for semi-auto carry guns for decades to follow. It was also the first commercially successful double-action, single-action pistol on the market, a mechanical design that has been used by a multitude of service and self-defense weapons since. Light and compact, the PPK utilizes a fixed barrel blowback action. Because the barrel remains fixed, the PPK is surprisingly accurate for such an easy-to-carry gun. The PPK was the inspiration for several other guns, like the Russian Makarov and everyone's favorite fictional MI6 agent, James Bond, carried one as a sidearm. Ninety years after its inception, the PPK remains a popular carry gun, and they're now made in Walther's Fort Smith, Arkansas facility. Smith & Wesson Model 29 We often associate the 44 Magnum Model 29 Smith & Wesson with Dirty Harry Callahan. But the real driving force behind this gun was Elmer Keith. In the 1950s, Keith, a gun writer and big bore enthusiast, was uploading the 44 Special to high pressures, and he wanted a gun that would handle that kind of energy. He got his wish when Smith & Wesson produced their N-Frame revolver in 1955 in the powerful new 44 Remington Magnum. 
The 29 rose in popularity after Clint Eastwood uttered those famous lines about it being the most powerful handgun in the world in 1971. But the Model 29's enduring legacy is that it made big bore Magnum revolvers available to the public. The M29 and its various end frame variants remain in Smith & Wesson's lineup and will for the foreseeable future. Colt Model 1873 the Colt Model 1873 revolver, universally known as the Colt Single Action Peacemaker or Frontier, is one of the most popular and legendary small arms in the USA. It is also one of the longest living production small arms, being produced for 130 years and still popular. In 1873, the US Army adopted this revolver along with its black powder centerfire cartridge of 45 caliber and issued it to troops in two models. The Army Cavalry model had a 7.5-inch barrel, and the Artillery model had a 5.5-inch barrel. Both were chambered in 45 Colt. It is a single-action, six-shot, solid-frame revolver. The cylinder is loaded by single rounds via side-swinging loading gate, located at the right side of the frame. Since this handgun has no special drop-proof safeties, it is strongly recommended that it should be carried with the empty chamber under the hammer, with only five rounds loaded. The single action army is seen fitted with many different types of grips, the most common being wood, vulcanite, ivory, pearl, and staghorn. Walther P-38 Like the P-08, Walther P-38 was quite popular with troops so armed. It was much more reliable and rugged than the Luger P-08. The P-38 was the first pistol to combine a locked breech with a DASA trigger, whereby the hammer could rest with a round in the chamber, and the first shot could be fired in double action mode with subsequent shots fired in the single action mode. This design has been copied numerous times, up to and including today for most modern pistols, until the advent of the striker fired pistol. The P-38 even enjoyed the respect of many Allied soldiers. Wartime captured P-38s found their way to the hips of many in the infantry, paratroopers, and pilots. After the war, the market became flush with surplus P-38s. Many were brought to the States as wartime souvenirs by returning soldiers. The P-38 was made in a number of variants. Early experimentation with chamberings like 38 Super and 45 ACP didn't go far. A few chambered in 765 by 21 mm Parabellum and 22 long rifle versions were also manufactured and sold. Walther also made a P-38K with a short barrel, but it is actually made from the P-4 pistol. Very few of these were made. Consequently, they are very high priced. <laughs>